Okay, so first of all, uh, let's uh, recognize our weekly Spotlight student. Uh, this time, this week, uh, William Zhao is the Spotlight student of level E. And unfortunately, nobody had all questions correct answer for, uh, uh, for the level M problems. So uh, there was no level M Spotlight student. So I think I saw William uh, on a call. So William, can you introduce yourself and tell us your favorite thing about math? I believe this is your first time to be recognized as, as a Spotlight student. Well, my name is William Zhao and uh, I, um, I like, I basically like everything about math, but I mainly like logic puzzles. Okay, so you like logic puzzles. So I guess those, uh, you know, those uh, letters, you know, uh, arithmetic, alphabetics, you like those as well? They are logic, they require some logic? Yeah. Okay, uh, which problem would you like to talk about uh, today? Well, um, I can talk about any one, but um, I think that, uh, Number three was my fastest one. Number three, the level E number three? Yeah. Okay. So I'll give you level E number three, the problem, this uh, $8.45 thing, huh? So get prepared, all right? Um, so let's start with our problems. The first one. So this is a problem, a arithmetic problem. So there is a, there, there are five numbers and there are four blanks. And I'd like you to put in all four basic arithmetic uh, operators. So that means I want you to put in plus, minus, multiplication, division, right? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. And put these in this blanks. One, two, three, two, one. And then after that, put one pair of parentheses. And then I'll ask you, what is the maximum value of the resulting expression? So I see many different answers here, okay? So I will just give you one, and then I want to hear if any, any, uh, any of you uh, has, a, has a higher number, you know, can come up with a higher number, okay? So this is what I got. So I'm getting... Um, one plus two times three divided by two minus one. And this equals seven. Okay, so I'm getting seven. So there's addition, multiplication, division, subtraction, and then a pair of, one pair of, of parentheses. And I'm getting seven, okay. Any one of you get a higher number than seven? You can unmute yourself and tell me how you got it. Yes. Okay, Alexander. Okay, go ahead. So I, I got a uh, my resulting in the expression was nineteen. Okay, Bracket, tell us how you got nineteen. I got nineteen. Yes, tell us how you got nineteen. Bracket one plus two because I know one times anything is just useless, so I have to plus one plus two uh, times can three. You, sorry, can you tell us the equation first? Just tell me the expression and then and then I'll bracket let... one plus two bracket x uh -huh. ta I mean times three uh -huh. times two. Uh, nope, you cannot do uh, two multiplications because there are only two, there are only four blanks. You have to fill in all four basic arithmetic, arithmetic operators. You cannot put two multiplications. Okay. All right, now you can mute yourself. Uh, I want to hear if there are others who get a higher number. Anyone else get a higher number than seven? Again, you cannot put in, you know, uh, duplicated uh, 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 operators because there are only four blanks, and you have to put in all four basic arithmetic operators. So this is this is not allowed. Okay, 
Uh, anyone else? If no one else, let me ask you, anyone else had a different way to come up with seven? I Go ahead. Oh, who else? Me, I, whatever. Uh, yeah, your name. You need to announce your name. Summer. Summer, go ahead. Okay, so, well, I also got seven. Okay. Um, but I only changed a few different things. So it's... Yeah, you got it. Um, so parentheses around one plus two. Okay, one plus two. And then it's times three. Times three. Minus two divided by one. Very good. This is the other one I got too, so... There are other ways to get seven. One plus two, put parentheses, and times three minus two divided by one, this is seven. Okay. Any other ways to get seven? And these are the only two I, I, I thought of. Any other ways to get seven? Okay, if there are no other ways, let me explain to you uh, what's going on, all right? So here you have to put in four operators and then uh, i asked for uh, four operators plus parentheses and i asked for the, the biggest number okay so because in order to make a number bigger you want to do plus and the multiplication right and in order to make a number smaller you do minus and division right and in this case of course you can divide a number divide a fraction let's say it divides uh one over six but then that means if you want to introduce fraction here, you have, to do, you have to do two divisions. And in this problem, there are only four blanks. You have to put in one uh, uh, operator in each blank and they're all different. So you can make these fractions, okay? So that, that, you know, that's why you, know, you can forget about divide by, you know, divide by two over three, something like that. You don't have this, okay? You don't have the luxury of doing this. So that's why I, I try to put things, I've tried to put division and subtraction to the end of this equation, okay? I'm trying to put in uh, division and subtraction to the end of the equation. And then in order to do this route, you know, either you put uh, division first, subtraction second, well, subtraction at the end and division second to the end, or you put subtraction second to the end, division to the last, right? And then you put in additions and uh, uh, multiplications in the front, so additions and multiplication in the front. And then you try to find where you put the brackets, okay? I put parentheses here at the end or put parentheses at the beginning. All of them is to multiply, make sure you multiply by three. Okay? This is like, try to make the number the greatest. The largest number here is three. And then you multiply the, you know, the way you want to enlarge your, your equation. You multiply by three, that's the largest, right? So we come up with these two equations. They both end up with seven, okay? So the answer to this problem is seven, okay? Any other questions or comments to this problem? If no, let's move on to the second problem. Uh, So most of you had this problem done correctly. So who want to talk about this one? You need to announce your name first. I can. Your name, you need your name. Okay. Yeah, that's the rule. Okay? So if you want to talk about it, I say talk, you know, you say, I can, I don't know who you are. Okay, uh, tell me your name. So Ryan, go ahead. Uh, so what I did, I just, uh, I started with 20, 20, 20 divided by 20. 20, 20. Ah, 20, 20 divided by 20 is 101, okay? So I know that the average of the set is 101. Uh, the the average, average, this is the average of the 20, 20 numbers, right? So then um, I know that the number between the 10th and 11th number in the sequence is 101. Uh -huh. so that means what? So the 10th number is 100, and then the 11th number is 102. 
Very good. So tens number is a hundred. This is the tens number, and this is the elevens number. Okay. So then I just uh, went to the left by. Well, I just kept going out with that. So then I just found out that the nines number was ninety-eight, and I just kept doing that. Oh, okay. So you started going back ninety-eight, ninety-six, all the way to the first one. What uh, What did you find for the first one? Eighty-two. If some of you need to mute yourself. Everyone, please mute yourself. Other than right, there are a lot of background noise there. 82. So this is the first one. Yeah. Okay. And the last number is 120. Uh, well, do you really need to go to the last number? Oh, well, no. But I just, uh, and then I just did 82. And then 84, 86, 88, 90. Okay. 88 and 90. So these are the first five numbers? Mm -hmm. And the, the, uh, the average is 86. The average is 86. Okay. There are a, a easier solution. Any, any other solutions? Yeah. Who's that? Raghav. Okay, Raghav, go ahead. So what you can do is write an equation, x plus x plus 2 all the way up to x plus uh, 380. I mean, sorry, not 380, 38. Or, okay, all the way to x plus 38. So this is an algebra approach, okay? Go ahead. So then you know that there are 20 terms, so there are 20 x's. Huh? So it's 20 x plus 2 times 1 plus 2 all the way up to 19. Times one plus two plus da 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 plus nineteen. Okay, so this is from two. Two times one is two. Two times two is four, and two times nineteen is thirty-eight. Okay, that's how you you know how Raghav got one plus two all the way to nineteen. Okay, and then you know that the sum of consecutive numbers starting at one is nineteen is n times n my n plus one over two. Okay. So you tell so, you carefully this, this, you know, this sequence, right? The sum of this arithmetic. Yeah. So it'll so, be nine, uh, that the sum of one plus two all the way up to 19 is 19 over times 20 over two. Okay. And then the twos cancel out. Oh, okay. Okay. You can just do two times this. Okay. This, this equals 380. Yep. Okay. So then you can see that 20 X plus 380 is equal to 2020. Okay. So you can take, you can divide by 20, which gets X plus 19 equals 101. Mm -hmm. So X equals 82. Okay. And then you can just find the third number, which is 86. Okay, the third number is 86. This is the third. So, from all the way from this x thing all the way to x equal to 82 this is to find out the first the first number right and then ragav took a shortcut here so all, you know since it's asking for the first five the first five even, even numbers i mean the average of the first five so we know this is uh, you know arithmetic sequence <coughs> and then the average of the first five will be the third number okay the third number so ragav just look look for the third number which is 86 okay <coughs> Again, uh, everyone, please mute yourself. Okay, everyone else, please. Mute yourself. All right. Um, so Raga find eighty six, and Raga took took a different approach, uh, you know, using algebra to find out the first one. Okay. Uh, any other approach? Any other methods? I need the uh, distinct, you know, very different approach if there is any. Okay. If not, uh, I will comment on this. Um, if I were doing this, you know, I will do first 2020 divided by 20 is 101, okay? And then I will find the tens number, the tens number, okay, the tens number. The tens number will be 100, okay? And then all I need is, you know, without looking for the first, I don't need to know the first. All I need is to find the sevens number, okay? The sevens number will be 100 minus 100. This is the sevens number, I mean, uh, the third number. I'm looking for the third number. 100 minus 7 times 2 is 86. So that's it, right? Because the third number from the third to the to the tenth, there are seven numbers. You know, from the third 
it will be seven twos. So minus seven times two is eighty six. Okay, that's that will be what I what I will do. Okay. Got it? All right, so let's move on to the next problem. Um, I believe William want to talk about this one, right? Yeah, I can talk about it. William, please, yeah, you already unmute yourself. And everybody else, please mute yourself, okay? Go ahead, William. So I just see that um, uh, they all have to uh, pay the same amount and and the total amount is um eight dollars and forty one cents. Okay. So then, okay. um, w when I see eight dollars and forty one cents, I know that it can it can only have four factors. It can I only mean, have four factors. Okay. What are these? No, 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 not not no, no. That's not what I mean. I I mean like, like. What was it again? Uh, uh, the the number that um the the whole group can have is either four or three factors. Uh, what do you mean? Because like they can't have like multiple groups. So, what that I don't think that really has to do. Okay, so um, can I just move on to like what I actually okay. did? Okay. So that, I just look at four eighty one. 481 and then right away i see it can't be divisible by 2 4 8 etc and i know it can't be divisible by 3 because you already have the 8 4 and you, you add an extra 1 which is 13. Uh, not 3 not 2 okay so then by this point i just realized that um nine dollars is really close okay to, oh okay nine dollars is very close um, so there's two ways you can just see if um, 841 is 29 times 29. You can either write it out like this, um, $9 equals 30 cents times 30 cents. Okay. Well, uh, I will do 900 equals 30 times 30, okay? And then, and then to make it 30 times 29, you can just... So, uh, say, so then you can um, put it as 30 times 29. So you have to subtract the 30 from the number. Okay. So that will be then, minus 30 is 30 times 29. Okay. And then you can just do it like 20 and you take a 29. So then it will be um, 900 minus 59. 900 minus 59. Equals 30, 29 times 20, 29. 29. Okay. And that equals A41. So by now, I know that um, there are 20, 29 people, and then they each pay their share by um, with 21, 29 cents. All right, very good. Okay. And then, so I just write it as uh, uh, four coins, uh, 25 cents, because I know there has to be four pennies. Okay. So four. then. So then I just see uh, what four coins have to be 25 cents, which is um, three nickels and three nickels and one dime. Okay, so that will be three nickels and one dime, right? So then I just do three times, since it's asking how much nickels there are, I just do three times 29, which is 87. Very good, the answer is 87, okay. Any other questions or comments on this? Okay, so for this problem, you know, I would do something similar, but, uh, you know, for me, when I look at 841, and I look at these, you know, this um, amount of group of students, so I need to figure out, and each student pay the same money. So I will say, you know, 841 must be equal to a, the number of students times the share, the share, money. Okay, this is students, this is money. So if, if we have, uh, you know, if we have this, uh, how many, we need to basically factorize A41, okay? We need to factorize A41. And then how to factorize A41? I look at A41, I will think of 90, uh, 900 as well, 900. And this is the same as A41 is 330 uh, minus one square, okay? So that will be 900 minus 60 plus one. That's how I got A41. So I know there are 29 students 29 student, each student 29 cents, okay?
So, and then the rest is the same, okay? Good. So the next one is the most difficult problem, alphabetic problem we've encountered so far. So let's, uh, I don't need to copy this. I will just do, I will write it this way. So it will be tau Hong plus Leo Hong equal coolest. Okay. Uh, who want to talk about this one? This one is tough. Um, could I? You need to announce your name again. Um, Aiden, but I'm using a different name. I'm do using a different account, but I'm Sophia. Okay, Aiden. Uh, who? What's your name? Sophia, but I um Sophia, using okay. a different account. Yeah. Just say your name. Uh, go ahead, Sophia. So um, we can see from the O's that O plus O equals O, which means okay. that O plus O um plus one equals O, or O plus O just equals O. So O okay. could be it will, zero. It will be either O plus O plus one because H H plus H could be a number greater than ten. So, uh, you say O it will be either O equal to what? Either nine or zero. Nine or zero, right? So O can be either nine or zero. So if O is nine, that means nine plus nine plus one. Here, mm -hmm. nine plus nine plus one is nine, right? It's nineteen. So end with nine. And then, um, well, um, if you do the whole entire question and you start with zero, then you could prove later on that zero um, is not correct because uh -huh. none of the stuff matches up. But if uh -huh. you use nine, then um, all the things match up. Okay. So basically, you try the, you try, you know, you try them. Okay. You try if O is zero, it doesn't work. But when O is nine, it works. Okay. And then um, you just have to try an error from after that. And mm -hmm. I started with H because there were um, less possibilities for it to be, mm -hmm. well, numbers. Okay. But, so uh, then you look, you look for H. Okay. So H. Uh, oh, by the way, so I just got a message from Zoom saying the meeting is ending. I don't know what happened, but in case our meeting ended, uh, you can dial in just, you know, using the same number, the same, uh, the same access and then come in, come back in again. Okay. And if that doesn't work, I, you know, I will be sending a new meeting ID and password to your parents. So there may be some technical issues there, but uh, just in case uh, our meeting ended, you can dial in using the same number or, you know, ask your parents for a different uh, meeting ID and password. Okay. All right. Oh, keep going. I forgot, but um, O is nine, and um, well, um, like we already know that it's nine, and mm -hmm. um, which means that O plus O will equal eighteen. Okay, O plus O is eighteen. Yeah. Which means E is eight. E is eight. Couldn't O be zero? Uh. Basically, if O is, if you try it, if O is zero, then uh, then uh, it will it won't work. So they, it will be, it will contradict. And it will have to be one, but um, it will have to be one, and so, you could just start trying yeah, erroring. A will be one, so you'll have T one nine. It has to a, be zero. I, N G. It has, oh, no, to a has to be zero. Yeah, A has to be zero. Okay. But what about nine plus nine? It's a carryover. It's a carryover. L eight nine H nine N G. Yeah, and then D nine nine L eight S T. Okay. And then what did you do? Well, you have to try an error starting with H. Well, I started okay. with H because there I were less. With H. I started with H as well. Okay. So you try H. Plus H is L. Okay. Well, actually, H plus H plus, plus one plus one is is L. Uh, exactly, it's L plus ten, right? 
And then, um, you know that, and H would could only be, um, five, six, well, um, seven, and I think eight and nine. Wait, no, uh, nine is already used. Eight and nine, because you already used eight and nine. So H will be five, six, seven, and L will be, you know, um, response L will be what? L will be, um, one, three, or five. Yep. Yeah. L will be one three five, okay. And you just have to try an error from now on because there's no yeah. more way to do it. From here on, then you you can list the table, right? So then you also have T plus L is C, okay? And then you have N G plus N G is S T, okay? You have these. Then basically the rest is trial and error. So you list the table, you know H L. T G C H uh, N S. I will just try one and to show you how it works. So if H is five, L will be one, and then I can try T T and G. Right? If T is two, G will be six, and then C could be three, and then you have N and S is four and seven. So this won't work. Okay, and then you can keep trying. So if five one, if T is four, it won't work because H plus. Uh, H L T yeah T plus L will be five and you know C will be five but five and five five C and H should be different numbers so it won't work all right keep trying and then you will find the the, the correct answer all right the correct one is H is five L is one H is five L is one five one T is six G is three and then C is seven N is two S is four. Okay, so the, the coolest is seven, nine, nine, eight, four, uh, one, eight, four, it's one, eight, four, one, eight, four, six. Yeah, okay, so this is the answer, right? Okay, so let's start our uh, discussion of, of the middle school problems, okay? Um, oh, this is the first one, I already copied it. Okay, who who want to talk about this one? Raghav. Raghav, you just talk about one early on. So I heard, you know, well, um, I can do it. Uh, who's that? Roger. Roger, go ahead. Okay, so I had I said it equal to m squared because it's a perfect square. Okay, so you said n squared plus twenty twenty is m squared. Okay. And then I subtracted m squared to the other side. Oh, wait. And then. Say again? Well, let me think about it. Wait, does that work? Okay. Who else? Oh, yeah, okay. I subtracted n squared to the other side. Uh, yeah. So you do 20, 20 equals m squared minus n squared. Is this what you did? Mm -hmm. okay. And then, so that's m plus n times m minus n. Uh, hold on, hold on. So there's, there's a window popped up. Okay, okay. So you said equals m plus n times i m minus mm -hmm. n. Okay. And then I found a prime factorized twenty twenty. Uh, prime factorized twenty twenty. Mm -hmm. So what you got? Um, two squared times five times one hundred one. Okay, and 101 is a prime, okay? And then you know that n has to be less than m because m minus n should be positive. Okay, m so then, minus n is positive, okay? So the positive possible values are 1 times 20, 20, 2 times 1,010, 4 times 505, 10 times 202, and then 20 times 101. Okay. 4 and 10 times... Hmm. Uh, two, and 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 twenty times one hundred one. Twenty times one hundred one. Okay. And then you can see that. So if n, so n is the smaller value. So mm -hmm. then I tried those values. I mm -hmm. plugged it in. So then you have like m minus for the first one. If you had one times twenty twenty, you have m minus n equals one, and then mm -hmm. m plus n equals twenty twenty. You see, okay. it doesn't work because it's not an integer. It's supposed to be All a perfect right. square. So this doesn't work. See. 
And basically, you tried all of them, and you find probably these only these will work, right? Uh huh. And also notice, remember, you can you don't have to try all of them because you can see that when they're both even, they work. Because okay. Or else you could do. They both even. Okay. Good. Wait. And then right. I solved for them. And so, so I got um, 600. N was 504 and 96. Okay. And then you add them up, it's 600. So the answer is 600. Good. Okay. So there's oh. 600. Oh. So the sum of all possible, all positive values of n is uh, the sum of 504 and 96. The answer is 600. Yeah. Why can it not be an integer? I mean, why can't it be, why does it have to be an integer? Because m is a, because it says n square plus 2020 is m square, m is a perfect square. I mean, m square is a perfect square, so m has to be an integer, right? And when n is not an integer, you multiply these two, they are not, you know, and m is an integer, then, uh, you know, you don't get a, you don't get an integer number. Okay. What if n is a fraction? Yeah, if n is a fraction and m is not a fraction, you multiply these two, you know, they will come up with a fraction, with a, dec with a number with decimal point. Okay. Dr. Hong, I had a question about this problem. Okay. Um, so the thing is, um, I, th I thought that like any number plus an even number can't mm -hmm. be any square number plus an even number can't be a perfect square because like it be like say like seven plus seven squared it um and then seven squared is 15 away from um eight squared and i think uh -huh. it, so how how can a number plus plus even, an even number be another square number uh, well we just show you right so this it, it, it can't work. So I think uh, the, your statement was, it was not a theorem. So your statement was incorrect. So the, the two perfect squares, they may be uh, apart by a given number. Really? Okay. okay. Yeah, I think uh, the, that uh, it's two perfect squares you can find for, for any odd numbers. So if it's n squared plus an odd number, is n squared. You can always find odd numbers, you know, they are a part by an odd number. But, uh, you know, in this case, they can be a part by an even number. Isn't, um, but isn't, uh, it, um, but, so are, but then how will it work if N and M are not integers? Okay, I don't never mind. Oh, hold on, so hold on, let me, let me rephrase it. So, if they are, they are, uh, yeah, they differ by odd numbers, so, you know, A, if this is 8 squared, this is 7 squared. And then, you know, a squared plus uh, seven squared is 49 plus 25 is eight squared. So for any odd numbers, you can find two, um, two perfect squares that they are, you know, this, this odd number apart. Okay. Oh, any number that's one apart from a perfect square, you can, oh, never mind. Yeah. Right. So, or you can say it's any odd number, any odd number can be written as, the difference of two perfect squares. You can do this, okay? Are 49 and 64 15 apart and not 25 apart? Oh yeah, 15, you're right. 49 plus 15 is 64, correct. <laughs> Wait, so the odd number occurs when, when m squared and n squared are like uh, next to each other on perfect squares? Yes, yeah, in this case, yes. You know, eight and seven, they are one apart. So you can come up with this odd number. Well, actually, I have a question. You can basically, you can basically um, always come up with an odd, odd, um, you can basically always come up with an, um, any odd number can be, like, you can find any odd number, um, like, any odd number uh, as a difference between squares because, like, um, if the two, if the two number, if n and m are consecutive, then in order to find um, um, their difference, it will be m plus n times n minus n. And since m and n are consecutive, they're... It must be odd. Yeah. The, the sum of them must be odd, right? Got it? Yeah, that's what I meant. If they were consecutive, then it has to be. 
Yeah. Okay. I um, if they are, what do you think about what if they are not consecutive? Let's say if this is seven square, and the other one is uh, uh, eight, nine, ten square, that works too. Right? I know, I know, I know, I know the theorem. I know what it means. So okay. if it's if it's a part by an if m squared, if n minus m, if m, n. Let me find a way to write what a word. n squared minus n squared plus n squared minus m squared is an mm. odd number if n if m if m minus n is odd if m minus n is odd yeah one three five seven nine oh that is true wait yeah, yeah, we we can yeah, that is true. we can leave that to a separate discussion. But I want to hear if there are other solutions to this problem. Oh, oh, okay. Hong, I have another question. Okay. I think I think it works for non-integers too. Uh, what do you mean? Which works for non-integers? Like when n is not an integer. Okay. Yeah. You know. When, talk about it. Oh, uh, like. When uh m is twenty twenty one over two, and when okay. n is twenty nineteen over two. So m is twenty twenty one over two, twenty twenty one over two, and n is what? Twenty nineteen over two. Uh, it's not gonna work. Why? Because m, this is a, you know the the problem said the sum of n square plus twenty twenty is a perfect square. Perfect square means a square of an integer. So oh, okay. m has to be an integer. So when n is not an integer, m has to be, uh, you know, m, uh, you know, if m and both m and n are, are fractions like this, and you know, then m square won't be a perfect square. Okay. Right. You can definitely factorize them. Right. You can factorize them. You know, you you do twenty twenty times one. You can do twenty twenty times one, and then use it to solve m and n. But then m is not an integer. We want m to be an integer. Got it? So, like, if you even, like, you solve the system equation and you got, like, fractions, they're not the answers? Correct, right? So, because there is a constraint. m has to be an integer. So, you can solve all of these and see which one of them gave you an integer m. Right? Remember, I said the problem said the sum of all positive values of n. But it, at the beginning, it said the sum of n squared plus 2020 is a perfect square. That means you said this m, m is a perfect square, right? I have another way to solve it. Okay, go ahead, Leo. Uh, let me start with a new page n squared plus 2020. So, um, instead of making it um, n squared plus 2020 equals n squared, I made it n, n squared plus 2020 equals n, a plus n squared. A plus n squared. Because you know this, you know, this will be bigger, this will be bigger than n, okay? So you do n, uh, n plus a or a plus n, okay? Which, and that equals a squared plus 2an plus n squared. Okay. Which means that a squared plus 2an equals 2020. Ah, 2020 equals a squared plus 2an, okay? And you can factor out an a to get um, a times 2a plus, um, 2n plus a. 2n plus a, okay. Equals 2020. Okay. And you see that um, if a is odd, mm -hmm then a would be odd, so a it would be odd, odd. and true n would is even no matter what, uh -huh. so it would be odd times odd, odd times odd, which equals odd, but 2720 is even, so this won't work, so, so a must be even, so a should be even, okay? And a plus 2n will also be even. a plus 2n will be even. So if you factorize 2020, mm -hmm. you get 2 square times 5 to the first times 101 to the first. Mm -hmm. so, um, that, 
So um, you want to make sure that a and a plus two n both have a two. Very good. So they both have a two. So a will be two times something. A plus two n will be two times something. Okay. So you so, basically you put these two square on each side of so a and it can a be true. Mm -hmm. Um, one can be true. The other can be um the other could be one thousand ten. Mm -hmm. Uh, two times five or five. Yeah. Okay. And then, or it could be two times five, uh -huh. and two um, times one or one. Okay. Um. So then you see. Um. So then you see that it's it's two and um one thousand ten okay. and ten and two or two. Ten and two or two. All right. So then you can solve. Very good. You can solve the. You can solve n. Right. All right. So, any other questions or comments on this problem? Okay. So let's move on to the next one. The next one is uh, probably the easiest one among this set. A B C D is a convex pentagon. All right. So this is basically asking for. I will just draw a simplified picture. Okay. This is basically asking for a star, and what is the sum of these five angles? And this star can be any shape, any, you know, this, this has, doesn't have to be a regular star. Okay, who want to talk about this one? Oh, wait. Ryan? Ryan? Uh, mm -hmm. you, you already shared one solution, right? Okay, yeah. Okay, who else want to talk about it? Um, David. David, go ahead. Okay, so we see that the inside of the big star has mm -hmm. a pentagon. And mm -hmm. according, so a pentagon can be split into th into um, three triangles. Okay. Have five hundred forty degrees total. Mm -hmm. And so divide by five, so you get one hundred eight on each angle. Oh, you're making this a, a, a regular. Okay, that's okay. Uh, so you, you you basically said this is a, this is uh, five hundred five hundred and forty divided by five is one hundred eight. You treat this as a regular pentagon, so mm -hmm. one away, and then, and then um, so for each one of the little triangles, mm -hmm. so the angle seventy two. This will be seventy two. Yeah, and so the the one, the one that one will be um thirty six. Five mm -hmm. times thirty six is one hundred eighty. That's how you draw one hundred eighty. Six times five is one hundred eighty. So this way is to give, you know, since in this, in this problem, I didn't specify what kind of uh, pentagon we're working with. So, you know, Dave make a special case. This special case is, uh, you know, putting this star in a regular pentagon. So assuming we, we, are, we are talking about a regular pentagon and then we create this star. And, uh, you know, if this is a regular star, then each, each of these small angle is 36. And then 36 times 5 is 180. So this is a good solution too. So, uh, you know, when the problem didn't specify what kind of, what kind of shape we're working with, you know, that means we can pick any shape we like, right? So they picked a regular <clears throat> pentagon and that worked, right? Uh, any other solutions? Any other more I general? <clears throat> I have one. I have one. I have one as well. Uh, both of you have talked before. So let's see if there are others. All right, no other. So then, uh, since Ryan spoke for first, so Ryan, go ahead. Um, so what I did, I just label. I uh, made two other angles. I labeled two other angles, which were the um, the ones which uh, are below A, angle A. So I labeled those as angles one and two. Uh, which one is one? Uh, they're like right below angle A. I'm not sure what. Uh... So this one is one. No. There's like two angles between uh, line EB. Two angles between line EB. And, you know, let me do this. A, B, C, mm -hmm. E, e, F, G, H, I, J. So tell me which angle you're working with. Uh, well, I, just, I was working with the, uh, the extra angle of F and G. Well, you need to uh, express, the, express the angle. What oh, do you sorry. Mean? Uh, I was working with AFG and AGF. AFG and AGF, these two angles? Yeah. Okay. So I just saw that um, 
they were the exterior angles of uh, angle angle uh, of angle G F J. Ah, okay. So G F J. Mm hmm. Oh, there. Are you saying? Oh, sorry. Are, the, uh, yeah. Are you saying that exterior angles of this triangle? Yeah. Okay. So then, A F G equals what? If G equals uh, G B D plus F D B equals B plus angle D, right? Yeah. And then A G F equals angle C plus angle E. Very good. And then since A A F G mm -hmm. uh, is a triangle, mm -hmm. then and it's uh, the total of its angle measures is one eighty. Okay, so, so I just found everything at Very good. So this is a more generous solution. Okay. Very good. I have huh? I have another solution. Okay, go ahead. So um I just like kind of like made these angles zero A, big A, little huh. B, big B. Okay. Angles, like all around the world. Okay, so A, B, C, D, E, okay. And then I also added a, big A, big C, B, big C, big. Okay, so you do this big A, big B, big C. No, big B is a big. The same side, right? Eh? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. D, E, okay. So, so then, um, I saw that A plus, big A plus small A plus E. Big E equals big B plus small B plus big A. Hold on. So big A plus small A plus big E plus big E equals big B plus small B plus big C. What equals? Uh, I I don't agree. So big A plus small A plus E. Big A equals big E, right? No. Oh no, E is here. Okay, E is here. Okay. Big A plus small A plus E. Why? Well no, actually, well, no. no, actually I made the A right here, the B right here, the C right here. So they're the same. Oh, so actually it's big A plus small A <laughs> plus big B. Okay. Equals big C plus small B. Um, plus small c, um, equals big B plus small B plus um, big C. They're all 180. Yeah. Okay. So then if you add them all up. Oh, okay. Interesting. So you, you basically find out A plus small A plus big B is 180. And then B, big B plus small B plus big C is 180. Right, and then the third triangle is uh, big C plus small C plus big D is 180, right? Mm -hmm. And then the next one is big D plus small D plus big E is 180. And then the next one is what? Big, big, e. big E plus small E plus big A is 180. And you add them up, right? Okay, so you have A, B, C, D, E and B, C, D, E, A, they are the same. Right? And then you have 180 times 5, that's 900 equals. And, and big A, um, big A, big B, big C, big, big D, and big E uh, um, are exterior angles of the um, inner pentagon. Uh -huh. So they add up to 360 because it's like starting at one point and going up. So okay, so around. Big A plus big B plus big C plus big D plus big E, that's what? 360. 360. All right. So two of them are 720. <laughs> Interesting. Is so that's 360 times 2 plus these little ones A, B, C, D, E. A plus B plus C plus D plus E. The little ones equals 900. So they equal to 180. Very good. Okay. Interesting. Good. Good thought. I have another solution. Go ahead. So first, I labeled angle A, A, angle B, B, angle C, C, and angle D, D, and angle E, E. Uh, let, me, let me draw a new picture. A, B, 
C D E. Okay. Go ahead. Angle, angle A A, angle B B, angle C C, and so on. Uh, big A or small A? Small. Okay. A B C D E. Okay. And then I saw that the triangle mm -hmm. E like that has E B and then one of the intersection points. So let me mark them again. So A B C D E F G H I I J. Okay. So I saw that uh, triangle B E I mm -hmm. c includes E and B. B E I includes E and B. Yep. This triangle. Which means angle I must mm -hmm. be like 180 minus the sum of B and E. So this is 180, 180 minus B plus E, okay? And then, then 180 minus B plus E is on the line EC and BD. So that means the, so that means the vertical angles have to be equal to B plus E. Uh, which one has to be B plus E? Uh, ang Expressed angle. Tell me which D -I -H angle. D I H and uh, D I J. D I H. D I it's H. D I J. D I J. D I J. D I J. Okay. And uh, C I H. Equals C I H equals B plus E. But this is the you know you can prove this right. This is just the the, the same as what uh, Ryan said. So this is exterior angle of a triangle. This angle is the same as this, you know, this, let's say this is one, two, uh, three, four. Angle four is the sum of angle one and two. So this is the theorem, okay? Okay. We just prove it, okay? Mm -hmm. So right. then we can... But that's it, right? So that, then the rest is the same as minus or... Uh... No, it's different. Oh, okay. Go ahead, keep going. Then we can see quadrilateral A, D, I, C. A, D, I, C. Includes A, D, C, and B plus E plus 180. Oh, okay. So you're looking at this big angle, right? Yeah. Okay. Equals A plus D plus C plus this big angle, okay? And then, then this big angle. B plus B angle plus 180. Is B plus E. Two of these plus 180 minus B plus E, right? So which is equal to A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus 180 is equal to 360. Excellent. 180, this equals, because we're talking about an internal angle, the sum of the internal angle of a, of a quadrilateral. So this is 380, uh, 360. Then you get these off. Then this is 180, right? Very good. Cool. All right, so for the interest of time, we have to move on to the last one. That's uh, the most difficult problem. Yeah. Hopefully you have enough problem to uh, enough time to cover it, okay? So this is a jump rope practice, okay? This is a long problem. Ah, this is too long. Okay. Um, I don't know if any one of you did it right. I think on the call, probably Leo is probably the only one who did it right. Uh, he did it cl close enough. Um, I will I will briefly talk about this. And uh, uh, this is a tough problem. You can go, I'll tell you the answers, okay? So first of all, the easiest one, well, the, the very first step, you need to figure out for set A, set B, and set C, how long for each set? and then corresponding to how many jumps. So for set A is 15 seconds, and you can use the ratio to figure out, okay, 15 seconds, there are you know, 21 double unders per nine seconds. So uh, in total, out of 15 seconds, Leo is jumping how many times? 35 times, okay. And then uh, for B, it's 30 seconds. And then the ratio is uh, 22 double unders per 10 seconds. So that means you need to jump 66 times and the c is one minute so uh, 60 seconds and then 23 double unders per 12 seconds so that means he's jumping 115 times okay 
So it's asking, well, there are a lot of constraints. It's asking to, you know, one is minimizing, minimizing number of sets. Okay. And I can tell you that the answer to this one is, you know, at least, I mean, at minimal, you can start five sets into this 10 minutes. Okay. And these five sets, this is a, let me put it down, which this five sets will be a 60 second, followed by a 30 second, followed by 60 second, followed by 15 second, followed by 60 second. Okay. Of course, you can swap this uh, 30 and 15. And this in total, you are getting 446 jumps, 446 double unders. Okay. The other one is to maximize, maximize the number of jumps. Maximize number of jumps. And the way to ma maximize number of jumps is to make sure you use as much time as possible. And you want to use these, you know, short sets, okay, because they have more jumps per, per, per second, okay? So then to maximize the number of jumps, you have 60 seconds and then 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 15 seconds. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, wrong. 15 seconds, 30 seconds, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, and then 60 seconds. And then in total, this is 498 jumps. So the difference between the two, is 52, so that's the answer. 52 is the answer, okay. Then let me explain to you the rationale, okay. So first of all, if you want to minimize the number of sets, that means you want to put in as many long sets as possible. So if we consider, you know, C is a long set and uh, A is a short set and uh, B is a, a medium set. So if you want to minimize the number of sets, you have to put in as many long sets as possible, as many long sets as possible. So that means you want to stock as many 60 second set as possible. And then you have to put in, you know, one set for, you know, one of each set. That means, you know, you have to put in the 30 second, the 15 second as well. So this is the, the, uh, the minimal number of sets you can put, you can stop in a, in a 10 minute workout, okay? And this workout, it may end a few seconds sooner, but uh, that's what you can, you can, you know, this is the, the smallest you can find. And then to maximize the number of jumps, if you want to maximize the number of jumps, you have to put in as many small or short sets as possible, okay? And then that's what you get. And the other thing is, if you want to max maximize the number of jumps, you have to use as much time as possible. So in other words, you cannot, you, you know, try not to end the session with 45 seconds left, right? So try to use up those seconds, and then this is what you can get, right? Okay, so any questions? So this is the philosophy. So to to minimize the, the sets or maximize the jumps. This is the philosophy. Any questions or comments? I have a question. Okay, Dave. So um, the resting time between mm -hmm. 60 and 30, for example, is 90 seconds, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah, so the resting time will be the sum between the two. So this will be 90. So that's another thing. So when you maximize the number of jumps, for example, right? So you want to put in, you know, every time you put in a 60, that means if this 60 is somewhere in the middle, if this is 60, that means it's contributing to the rest time for the adjacent workouts, right? But if you put 60 on the end, that means it only contributes to one workout, to one resting time. So that saves some time so that you can jump more. Okay. Got it? And you don't have to um, take, take up the entire time? We don't have to take up the entire time, but we shouldn't end the session. Let's say... We should end the session after we're doing 60 and 30 and 15. We said there are so many seconds left. Let's just end the practice. That's not how we do workouts. Workouts means we have to, you know, we have to exhaust all the time we have possible. But we may end the time. Let's say if, uh, if at the end, the last workout is 60 seconds, right? And then there's, uh, uh, there's uh, 75 seconds left until 10 minutes. And there's not enough time to put in another workout here with 75 seconds left. That's okay, we can end it right here, that's okay. So we have to insert, we have to insert uh, uh, sessions if possible, okay? So the answer is, again, you know, these are the answers. You go back and see if you can beat these numbers. I, you know, I don't think you can, but uh, try to figure out 
how to how to construct these workouts. Okay. Any other questions or comments? I might have another comment. Mm -hmm. Um, it's kind of like a small thing. Okay. So if you have like these, um, if you have, um, if like there is X, Y, Z, W, and B, mm -hmm. and like those are the sets. Okay. Then the total amount of time will be two X plus three Y plus three Z okay. plus three W plus two B because like um it will be X plus X plus Y plus Y plus Y plus Z. Yeah. So X basically, the you know, X only contribute to to the, the the resting time of one workout, and so did the other end of the other the, the end of the workout, the last session at the end of the workout. Okay. Yeah. So you know you can use this is algebra. This is what Leo did to solve this problem. Okay. All right, guys. If there are no other questions, I will see you. Uh, I will, well, I'll talk to you next Thursday. Okay. Wait. What did Leo do? Huh? What? What did What did Leo do? I don't understand. Leo said you can use X, Y, Z, and W, V. Use these letters to uh, um, to to represent. The, the seconds you used for these sessions. And then, you know, this will be, you know, more visually, you know, more clear to see that when the session is at the end, you know, at the beginning or the end, you multiply in the, the, the duration by two, okay? And uh, uh, if, if these workouts, if these sessions are in the middle of a workout, you have to multiply their duration by three, okay? Because each of them contribute to two, two, uh, two resting, periods, right? Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, Roger, I agree, basketball is the best sport. Okay. <laughs> Keep working out, right? Try harder Better than every sport. Yeah, become, a, become a, the best player you can be, okay? And Isaac, swimming isn't a sport, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll see you next Thursday, okay? Talk to you next Thursday. Take care, Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, thank you. Bye, thank you.